everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, uh, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of a detour, I think, from the topic du jour today, right? So I'm just gonna explore some ideas that um, our our team at NS1 and I are thinking about that I hope you find interesting. We'll see where it goes. Um, should be probably a quick little talk. Um, so hopefully raises a, a new idea or two for everybody. It'll I think we'll have plenty of time for for Jamie and for some Q and A afterwards. So. Um, at NS1, and I will, I'll introduce us in just a second for those of you who, who don't know us. Um, we, we definitely live in a world full of chaos. Um, we are big believers ourselves in chaos methodology and continuous verification and in, you know, the application of chaos engineering to, to drive reliability and security in our systems. I could have talked today about how we apply some chaos principles in practice to do things like like we literally DDoS the broad infrastructure that powers huge chunks of the internet and we open source all the tech that we use to do that. Um, there are people at NS1 who are way more entertaining speakers about that than I am. And so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, like go Google NS1 and chaos and flamethrower and things like that, and you'll find some great talks out there. Um, instead, what... What I'm going to talk about are just some of the ideas that we're exploring as a result of the real world chaos that we and, and our customers, right, are always encountering, especially because of just exploding complexity in the network, right? So we're going to, we're going to talk about the network a little bit today. Um, just to set the stage for a second, if we haven't met, like I said, hi, I'm Chris. Um, I am the CEO at NS1, but um, uh, usually when people ask me what I do and they don't already know the title, I usually just say I'm an engineer. I still feel that way. Um, uh, if you don't know NS1, just super quickly, short story is we build tech that powers internet facing and internal uh, DNS and DHCP and IP address management and traffic steering, usually for big applications and big enterprises. Um, so that's where we sit. And um, there we go, Google. All right. Uh, you, you know, the other only other element is who do we do this for? And uh, you know, the short answer is a pretty sizable chunk of the internet. I, I don't really have permission to show you all the logos or whatever, but what I can just say is, uh, like, if you watch movies online or you listen to music or you stream big live events, you read the news, you play games, you use online tools to do work. You know, probably more often than not, we're powering the the domains and the traffic for those applications. So I just wanted to share just that little bit of context on, on where we're coming from. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, so something we've learned over the years being in the critical path for our customers is there are a lot of ways everything can go south pretty fast, right? There's a lot of kind of inherent chaos in the system, which is why obviously why chaos engineering is such a valuable practice in the first place, right? Um, there is not a day or even an hour, I'm sure right now, right? Our systems and customers are some, somehow under some kind of evil attack or there's some fluctuations on the internet that are being reacted to, that kind of thing is happening. I mean, there's a reason, right? Everybody kind of knows the phrase, it's always DNS um, because there are a lot of ways that everything in DNS can, can go wrong. Uh, and obviously we do a lot, a lot of work to avoid impact from all that chaos, right? We uh, do things like run global network footprints for DNS services at really big scale to mitigate attacks, right? Or we point our application domains at a few of those kinds of networks at any given time in case one of them breaks somehow, right? Um, and we build all kinds of fancy cryptographic stuff to ensure the authenticity of the data that we're getting from DNS footprints and that nobody's tampering with it and so on, right? So this is all, this is all stuff we do just to make sure that when you type whatever.com in your browser, you reasonably reliably get a valid IP address back for whatever that thing is, right? So that's just the DNS, right? And, and, and the DNS is, is just a component usually in um, a much broader universe of network infrastructure that, uh, I'll simplify it way down that connects eyeballs with code. That's really all that we care about solving for most of the time, right? So for, for uh, connected or online applications, right? We're, we're always investing and seeking to create um, better and better user experiences, which means more nines of reliability, right? Or lower latency or more throughput or other optimizations because those things ultimately um, tie back usually to more revenue or lower costs or less brand risk or whatever matters to the business. Um, and to do that, right, we introduce a lot of other technologies into the network to drive those optimizations. I touched on DNS a little bit, but there's a lot of other stuff too. And 
And all of those things that we're injecting, they result in um, complexity, right? On the path between audience and application, right? So a lot of complexity in service of this optimization. Um, and so just as an example, right? One of the things we do at NS1 is global traffic steering, um, which is, is really a lever. I think of, you know, the global traffic steering stuff we do as unlocking leverage in the domain footprint or the DNS footprint to steer application traffic usually around internet noise or toward the best performing infrastructure or away from CDNs where we've maxed out our bandwidth commit or something like that, right? And, uh, and there's a lot of other tech in the application network or in enterprise networks or in ISPs these days that is really just about providing more levers, right? More ways to inject a little bit of smarts here or there along that path between eyeballs and code. Um, and we're always adding more levers, right? So we can add a little bit more optimization or get a little bit more control here or there, which is great, but the trade-off is more complexity and more opportunity, like more degrees of freedom, right? For, for real world chaos to kind of do its thing. So um, if you take a step back and you think about where this is headed, and you know, I'm, I'm personally a little ahead of the curve today, right? I probably have like 40 or 50 connected devices of some kind in my house, right? Um, but, but on average, most connected humans in the next decade or so are gonna have hundreds of devices um, interacting with applications over the internet in, in, in that time frame. And, and while we're at it, right, thanks in part to that explosion of device footprint and data and everything else, edge compute and networking are kind of a thing so that we can handle all the data and the transactions of this just like exploding surface area, which means we're gonna have to go from um, today, kind of a typical internet application that more or less lives in like a couple or maybe three uh, locations or availability zones or whatever for the sake of reliability to applications that live in two or 3,000 or more little tiny spots so we can optimize for latency and data gravity and a whole bunch of other factors. So while all this stuff is exploding, the other thing that isn't changing is our expectations are still pretty high, right? When I have 500 things around my house that are connected, um, it gets even more annoying uh, when the applications that they connect to are down or slow and I can't, you know, like ring the doorbell anymore, right? Um, so, so all this stuff is going to keep driving as a result, just optimization after optimization. The question is, will the complexity of the network infrastructure between all these devices or eyeballs, users, clients, and the code and the data of the application keep multiplying in tandem with that complexity, right? Will we keep adding more points of leverage or more little brains between users and code? And how will we manage that exploding complexity and the expansion of all the set of things that can break? When, as we know, um, as we introduce more dimensions, well, the universe tends toward chaos, right? It will find ways to, to break those things. So let me uh, let me back up and detour for a second to uh, explain kind of a a happy accident, I guess, um, specific to us at NS1. Um, so most people know know NS1 for what we call our, our managed DNS services, which is where we power the authoritative DNS and the traffic steering for a lot of applications on the internet. What you might not know, <clears throat> excuse me, about NS1 is that we also deliver our tech as software. Um, into enterprise network environments to run the DNS and the DHCP and the IP address management. Sometimes that's in application use cases, but it's often in um, corporate IT use cases too. And without worrying about the details of that, what it mostly means is we're also the system of access, right? We get devices connected to these networks so they can use the applications that it turns out <clears throat> pretty often we power on the other side. And I'll admit that we didn't necessarily think ahead about the conditions this creates. But ultimately, because of our scale, um, what it means is pretty often we actually find ourselves at what I usually refer to as like both ends of the street um, for application traffic, right? So um, we're on the side of the user and the device who wants to interact with the application, and we're on the side of the application itself. So we started to think about this and, and ask ourselves, right, if we're running the same software right next to users or devices or whatever it is that we're running up in our cloud services to power these applications. Why can't we just um, push the work that we're doing in the cloud services closer to the users, 
same tech, right? Um, uh, so, for example, can we push the authoritative DNS data and the traffic steering policies and all the traffic data and all the other stuff that we do for our application customers right into those audience environments? And then what happens as a result of that? So this is the idea um, I'm going to explore really just for a few more minutes with you because I think it provokes some interesting questions. Um, about the way we can manage this like explosion in complexity that, that we're all dealing with. Um, first thing we noticed when we started to tinker with this idea is that uh, the, the risk surface area gets, gets carved up, right, into much more distributed chunks, right? Instead of everything kind of hanging on the availability and the performance of some big hefty global network that we run. And, um, for those of you who know managing you know, services, these networks, they look just like a CDN's network, if you're familiar with those sorts of things, right? Um, suddenly, instead, a lot of the work is happening from right next to end users, but across a lot more nodes, right? Much more distributed. And of course, there, there are um, some nice performance benefits as a result of that, but much more importantly, the the blast radius, right, for any kind of issue is actually much smaller, right? Instead of... Uh, Instead of NS1 taking out big chunks of the internet when there's some sort of failure in one of our systems, right? Instead, a tiny subset of the audience gets some impact when there's a bug or, uh, you know, uh, server failure or something like that. And uh, another effect of this is that you're moving the, the traffic handling and the policy that we enact for our application customers into a um, much less noisy and so a less chaotic environment, right? Inside the audience network instead of on the internet, behind the firewall is sometimes what we'll say, right? So you, you basically factor out just big categories of ways things can blow up, right? Like DDoS attacks go away, um, more or less. So the, the other thing that we found is we explored um, what happens when we're, you know, bo both ends of the street for application traffic is that we can kind of unshackle ourselves a little bit from uh, typical application networking architectures. And, and the reason we can do that is we don't we don't need to confine ourselves anymore because we, we're at both ends of the street to traditional internet protocols like DNS, right? Um, we can do a little bit more with the data and the metadata we have access to inside the audience footprint. So this is stuff like identity, who's asking the question or what kind of device are they on um, that normally we'd, we'd only get to find out sometime later in the the application delivery life cycle. So this means we can converge some of the other kinds of levers we would normally pull elsewhere in the application delivery path or the other like smart elements of the application network. So for example, um, if part of the application networking policy is maybe sending authenticated users or users on mobile devices, right, to some specific chunk of application infrastructure and sending unauthenticated users or users on web browsers to other bits of infrastructure. But we can start to drive that kind of policy from within the audience footprint rather than waiting until traffic passes through internet facing DNS and then some kind of authentication proxy and some kind of code that inspects device types or application versions or whatever it is, right? And as a result of that, we can start to dumb down the pipes, right? Between um, eyeballs and code and take out some of these other components that the gate or steer traffic, like SD-WANs or ADCs or, or others. Um, this ultimately ends up reducing complexity in that path, right, which reduces the vectors for chaos and the system, which drives reliability and predictability, not to mention it um, simplifies orchestration of uh, uh, these systems and the policies. It simplifies our control planes. And in some ways, you get this like democratizing effect. Um, it becomes easier for people to build applications that are more distributed and dynamic in their footprints, which I think is kind of a nice side effect. Um, so basically, we're consolidating more of the, you know, the smart functions of the network and we're pushing them out closer to the audience. And it has some kind of big and um, arguably desirable side effects, at least in, in theory. Um, so, so what about in practice? Um, these are kind of big out there ideas. And actually, honestly, there aren't too many examples out there in the real world today. There are a couple. Um, one that I think is pretty interesting is, is Envoy Mobile. Um, and I'm guessing most of the folks here have probably heard of Envoy, but, uh, 
in case you haven't, right, Modern Edge and Service Mesh, Service Mesh, excuse me, proxy open source created originally at Lyft, right? And, and Envoy Mobile is literally an implementation of Envoy that runs on mobile devices as part of a mobile app, right? So Envoy Mobile sp speaks the same uh, control protocols as Envoy, but it has all these like blast radius and security and expressiveness benefits that we touched on earlier. And it's out there in the wild today, powering uh, Lyft's mobile app and others. And it's creating leverage in those applications by consolidating visibility and control, by simplifying the rest of the application and the network architecture, and by unlocking more granular smarts about traffic handling on a device-to-device -device, uh, level of granularity. Uh, so, so Envoy Mobile, it's just a really interesting case for us to observe uh, this pattern in the wild, see how it continues to play out. Uh, one more, I, of course, would be remiss, right? If I didn't mention this is a pattern we're pursuing at NS1.2 based on what we found and, and learned. And so um, we have a product called Extended Edge, which is not something you can go get today because it, it's, it's not out there in the wild today, but pretty close. And it's basically the productization of some of these ideas we've been exploring. And we're basically combining the fact, as I said, that we run the internal DNS on the access side for a lot of interesting audience footprints, especially for us um, in uh, enterprise network or corporate network environments, uh, with the fact that we also power the applications those audiences are using disproportionately for us. That's like enterprise SaaS apps as a starting point. And what I think is kind of interesting about um, our exploration of this idea of being at both ends of the traffic street is um, a little unlike on Envoy Mobile, we're already in the stack. Right? We're already serving the domains, the DNS, the traffic for these applications, and we're already doing the job of connecting users uh, with those applications, which means we get to start to materialize these uh, reliability and security and performance and policy convergence benefits without our customers really on either side of that having to think about it right, or do anything um, to take advantage of it. So obviously, I'm kind of excited to see where this goes. I, the other thing is I expect that we will see others with similar footprints to NS1. There's a lot of companies like this out there leaning into similar ideas in the next year or two. There's a lot of conversation about this idea starting to happen in the industry, um, especially with companies that have product portfolios that span um, enterprise or service provider networking on the audience side, right? And into data center and cloud networking on the application side. Those are kind of the, the magic levers, right? And you know, what I ultimately hope is that this sort of exploration ends up being pretty great for everybody simplifies the path to to building network applications that are reliable and secure and scalable without just these crazy levels of investment and operational complexity we find happening in the scaled applications we see out there today so just to to bundle this all the way up right tie us off for today if there's one thing you take away i hope it is that the the complexity of networked applications is multiplying pretty fast because of the complexity in the audience footprint combined with our expectations, right? That applications are fast and reliable and secure and generally pretty seamless. And the path we're on today is one that kind of leans into that complexity, right? Continues to introduce more and more opportunities for real world chaos to find its way into our systems. And what I'm advocating is that we take a step back a little bit and think about how do we instead change the playing field we're on uh, a little bit because there are potentially some pretty interesting opportunities to to do dimensionality reduction on this problem. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Um, hopefully that was uh, uh, useful and interesting to some folks.